Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a vanity project, a wholly unnecessary, completely self-regarding, musical and artistic nullity. The Beethoven symphonies, all of them, under conductor Gabor Takash Nagy, with the, uh, let's see, the Verbier Festival Chamber Orchestra. The, uh, the emphasis is on the chamber part. Or should I say chamber pot? Because that's where it belongs. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Wonderfully played. Oh my, they do everything he wants. It's just that what he wants is completely irrelevant to the experience and understanding of Beethoven. In order to understand what we're talking about here, we have to sort of go into the background a little bit. Takash Nagi is a very gifted music musician, one of the founding members of the Takash Quartet, which he left in 1992. Um, he had some hand issues, then he had therapy, um, and then he regained his hand and formed another quartet. And now he's conducting. He's concertmaster or was concertmaster of the Budapest Festival Orchestra. No question that he's qualified for the job. He's been hanging out at Verbier for years. To their credit, this was not all done on one weekend. This was done over a period of years, one Beethoven symphony at a time. But you can also go too far in the other direction. You could make it too much of a project. <clears throat> to show you how much of a project it is, let's have a look at the little booklet here. Um, you know, up uh, oh, there it is. See, see this. Do you see this sort of like pre-game huddle? Well, that's what this is. It's a pre-game huddle. In fact, they say it's the hugging and shouting tradition before every concert, a way of eliminating fear and embracing spontaneity. Well, uh, eliminating fear, yes, they should be very afraid. Um, I, I don't know what they're afraid of, but yes, they should be very afraid. Um, as far as embracing spontaneity goes, there is not a shred of spontaneity in these overworked, totally mannered, micromanaged performances. That's what they are. I mean, spontaneity, they must be on drugs. And, you know, I mean, yes, the hugging and shouting. It's, 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 it's not a performance. It's an encounter session. I mean, we're, we're dealing with, with a therapeutic thing for the musicians and good for them. But did you also notice how few of them there were here? Let's look at that again. If that's the whole orchestra, we are in deep doo-doo. Look at this. For a Beethoven symphony, I mean, seriously, there aren't enough strings. There just aren't enough strings. You don't hear the violins most of the time, or often when they have the tune, or in order to hear everything, to have that chamber-like transparency, which they're obviously after, everything has to be kept under wraps. Everything. You know, everybody has to reduce their volume, and that's what it is. It's this very, very transparent, light, dynamically restricted sound. In terms of, you know, the mannerisms, oh my, the mannerisms, mannerisms. I mean, it's mannerism city. The most obvious one is the sudden, sudden piano crescendo in every loud part where Beethoven simply wants a crescendo, where they have to just get louder first, they have to get softer, and then they get a little louder. Happens over and over and over in the most predictable possible way. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the various performances. As you might imagine, the approach works best in the first two symphonies, which are the most, you know, small scale of all of them, although it's already a problem in the second, which is starting to get fairly, fairly much bigger. The first symphony is possibly the only tolerable performance in the set. The second is okay. The Eroica, oh my God, it's a mess. It's just awful. It's boring. It's incredibly boring. It has no tension whatsoever. In fact, none of these performances have any tension because they're all, they're all, they're all built out of exquisitely sculpted and micromanaged moments. Those moments, never, no moments never coalesce into anything as grandiose as a, a section or a paragraph or a movement, God forbid, a whole movement. I mean, really, I fell asleep listening to the Eroica. The fourth, well, I mean, 
I mean, I'm going to wind up saying it's the same thing over and over again, aren't I? But it, it, there's, I mean, the slow movement of the fourth. I love the slow movement of the fourth. It's one of the most gorgeous things Beethoven ever wrote. It's not like we're dealing with a period instrument nut job here. They're not doing that. But they're also not doing Beethoven. I, I mean, you know, that, that Largo, it's in rondo form, and it has to flow. And it has these broad singing melodies, and they don't sing. Oh, my God, they don't sing. And the scherzo. I mean, the scherzo has, has, has no energy, really no energy, and no bass lines. It, you, just, you, you need bass lines in this music, but of course there aren't enough basses to have bass lines. I mean, you can do these things with a chamber orchestra as long as you've got something on the bottom, but there's nothing, there's no bottom here. Um, in the fifth, well, you know, the opening is okay, it's tepid, it's tempest in a teapot stuff, right? And and the, the 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 finale, I mean, with the trombones and the trumpets, everything muted and congealed. You know, you'd never know you're dealing with a chamber orchestra here because because you have this very very compacted sound because there's no dynamic range. I mean, it sounds almost like you're dealing with uh, you know 78s. <laughs> you know, this just sort of. You know, that sort of thing. And you have, oh, the piccolo. Well, of course, the piccolo is the solo star of the entire movement. That you can hear. Never mind, you know, anything else. And then we've got, let's see, the pastoral symphony. Oh, looky. The, the, the opening movement has this sort of thick, oh, good Lord, come here. Come on. Come on. She was hearing this. Uh, Finster agrees with me about this. She hated it too, didn't you, dear? I know you did. So we had the pastoral symphony, yes. Where were we? The storm. Oh, forget the storm. The first movement. This, this sort of thick oleaginous slime. I mean, there's nothing fresh and, 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 and joyful about it. And the finale, the song of Thanksgiving, my God, it's slow and dull. She's playing with her scrunchie toy now. Oh, just terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's da, 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 da. No, that's not the way it's supposed to go. Now, the seventh has one of those openings where he splits the chords, you know, because they're they have to be they have to be arpeggiated because they're like quadruple stops of the violins, but it's like this. Ah! Gross, absolutely gross. The allegros are quick. I mean, the finale is very quick, but it's quick without tension. It just doesn't have any feeling of propulsion and and coiled, you know, tensosity. I mean, I just, it's just ugh. The eighth, the eighth, the most exciting passage of of dominant preparation and recapitulation Beethoven ever wrote, ever. Ever, even more than he did in the next symphony, in the first movement. Well, this, this is just, it, it's never sounded so tame. Never. Uh, partly because he does that diminuendo, crescendo thing. But then you may note that in the recapitulation, the principal theme comes in in the basses. And usually you don't hear it very well. And that's okay, because it's supposed to sort of be, you know, there's all this, this, this you know, fireworks going on on top. And that's what really gets your attention. And the Beethoven slips the tune in underneath. Now, some conductors will make a little diminuendo or something so that that tune comes out and Cell does, for example, does it very effectively. But this, with a tiny little orchestra to begin with, and no crescendo happening whatsoever, and no increase in energy, you do hear that tune with the one or two basses, however many they have there, who knows. Um, you know, you hear the tune. You just don't hear anything else. It's all wrong. It's upside down and backwards. It's grotesque. Now, the ninth. I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish. That, first of all, you don't hear the chorus. The chorus is too small. They get drowned out by the orchestra. You can't make out the words. The conception is not terrible. The best thing about it is the scherzo, which is really quick and very exciting and very accurately played. I, you know, I give them props for, for, you know, doing the huddle. You know, the huddle and the shouting. 
you know, it works. I mean, you know, in terms of their ensemble cohesiveness. Although, quite frankly, if you want Beethoven with a chamber orchestra with all of the excitement that Beethoven should have, then listen to Pavel Yarvi with the Deutsche Kammerphilharmonie Bremen, because they're unbelievable. The playing is on another level compared to this, and the interpretations at least, at least, you know, attempt to realize some genuine Beethovenian energy. So, so you don't hear the chorus and the first movement, oh, it's so lame and the recapitulation goes for nothing. And it, who needs this? It's, it's just totally, completely a waste of your life to spend more than 30 seconds with any of these performances. And that's the truth. It's just the simple truth. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.